Hey everyone, this is Michael with Duncan Aviation. Thanks for tuning in for yet another video on how we install Garmin's G5000 in the Citation Excel. Now, if you watch our previous videos, you can see we have come a long way in just a few weeks. Um, as you can see, the instrument panel's in, displays are on, the uh, throttle quadrants together, and the uh, touchscreen controllers are installed and working. All the wiring is done, um, circuit breaker panels are also installed. But a lot happened last week. None of this was here. We Once we got done with that process I was showing you before, where we had to put a pin on every wire and build the connectors, once that's all done, they have to go through a process called ring out. They have to make sure they did it correctly, assemble the connector correctly. So what they'll do is they'll take each connector, and they've got a multimeter here, where they're gonna put a lead into one pin on one connector, and the other lead is gonna be on the other end where it should connect to. Now this could be in the nose, could be all the way in the tail, so they've got a really long leads to do this. If they have assembled the connector correctly, they'll get a tone. And that's where they get the term ring out. Every single wire, every single pin, every single connector this has to be done to make sure it's done correctly. And yes, we do find errors from time to time. Once that's done, they go into the next process, which is called power checks. So before they plug this into a box, a very expensive box, they want to make sure when they turn system power on, it comes the power comes to the right pin and not the wrong pin. So again, they're going to double check. They'll have one lead in here and they'll turn power on to make sure the power comes to the right pin. Once they get through power checks, then they really start installing everything, which is what you see here. Um, all of it's for the most part installed, they've done a really good job. Now they're starting to load software and that's kind of where they're at here. This manual that they're going off of, it's about a 300 page manual that they slowly go step by step by step. And uh, so that's where they're at right now. They're actually at lunch break, so I snuck in here to do this. We're gonna jump out to the nose to show you what's going on out there. We're on the left side of the nose here um, and over the past few videos, a lot has changed. First time we came in, we had all the original avionics that were in here, and this whole bay was just packed full of everything. The next video, we had Terry over here, where he had all the wires coming through here, and the bay was almost empty. And now, you can see, for the most part, everything is complete, and there's a whole lot more room here, because basically, the avionics systems are a lot smaller and lighter weight. Now, Terry had all that wiring that he had to still terminate and build connectors for. And if you look, you basically don't see hardly any wiring. And the reason is, it's tucked back here. So here's coming through the bulkhead, it's routed behind. And if you look way there in the back, it runs behind all the racks and all the way back there. So since he's wrapped that up, all the racks were installed all the boxes were put in there. So just a quick run through what we have here. This is the Air Data Computer, um, the GDC 7400, the GDL69, which is the XM system. This is a standby battery. The GIA 64E, which is the GPS, NAV, and COM. Right here is the Air Data, I'm sorry, the uh, AHARS, which is the GRS 79. The crazy thing is, is look how small that thing is. It is just a tiny little box these days. Here we have the GMA36B, which is tied to the audio panel, and finally the GTX3000 transponder. Now we'll jump over to the other side here, where we have virtually almost all the same avionics. The difference is, up here, um, we have the GDR66, which is the CPDLC dedicated um, comm unit for that. And then you'll also see, it's a little easier to see the wiring on this side and how he's routed it all back there and how it all feeds through the pressure bulkhead there. From here, they'll take it outside. They're gonna fuel it up. Well, they'll do it fairly slowly to calibrate the fuel system, do engine runs, and then test flights. That's it for now. We'll talk to you soon.